That's a really good one. Did it turn out? Did it come out all right? <laughs> what? <coughs> that the one you just did? Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay, we'll have to try Get it. Get it. <laughs> Take a picture of the bar. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. And Keith's nose. I don't know that happened. Love the microphone. Oh. Maybe do like it. So I take it up. Oh. <laughs> I welcome to Bud Bowl week. You know what? You've got it because you sent it to you as well. Um, we introduce the panel. Yeah. Not well. Yeah. yeah. Let's start. Yeah. Should we start? Yeah. It's only ten minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes. I'm not gonna buy anything. Buy into the prop. bullshit. Buy into the bullshit. So who do I stand behind Keith first? Me. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that good, Paul? So tell me when you're ready. Ready? Oh, he's rolling. You're already rolling? Oh, you'll get the outtakes as well. Good evening. Welcome to Bud Bowl Week. I have uh, my esteemed colleagues here as uh, the panel. On my left, We've got um, Ryan Olney, who hosts the annual Olney opener, was a, has been a champion of, why am I looking at you? I don't stop, know. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you walked over there. Okay. Count me. The first ever pre-tournament drawing. And five. Bowl 20. There you Four. Go. Are we live? <laughs> Good evening. It's Bud Bowl week again, and it's Bud Bowl 20. This is going to be the final Bud Bowl at this arena, at the Golden Plum Arena. And so this is going to be an unprecedented uh, uh, procedure tonight, where we're going to make the, the uh, drawing for the uh, tournament live for you viewers. I have a panel of uh, esteemed colleagues here. We've got Ryan Olney, who hosts the Olney Open. At the beginning evening, of the stream, evening. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan is a two-time winner of these tournaments. Not this tournament. He's won the Ryan, He's won the only opener. He's won the Turner uh, Tourney. So he's going for a Grand Slam this next coming weekend. One can only hope, bud. He could join the ranks of uh, Mike Olney and Marcel Elfers, <laughs> <laughs> if he can achieve that feat. In the middle, Ken Clark. Good evening, bud. Good evening. Ken was at the original Bud Bowl one, and in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the um, the years, Ken actually hosted the tournament in Texas for three years, and did a marvelous job of keeping the tournament going uh, when we hit some uh, when it hit some bad times. Cheers, mate. Yes, it was very it was very tough, but um, Keith did speak to me, and I was happy just to step in, and um, Keith did surprise me. On one year by actually coming to Texas and so we were very honoured that he actually came and um, we had a really good tournament and I'm sure we'll have a good tournament this year. Our third panellist is Bad Boy Turner. Howdy bud. John Turner, famous, famous in 2011 for becoming the first young guy to win the tournament and um, I forgot shock name. the world. Yes. Yes, it was a, it was a very um, Famous tournament and a very uh, popular tournament that year, I believe. We, we, had, we had a mega crowd that year, but I believe this year's crowd is going to top that. It's going to be an unbelievable tournament this year. Uh, we're looking forward to... Um, it's going to be a long tournament. There's more uh, entrance this year than there ever has been, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We're breaking a lot of wreckage this, this year, but I mean, we have multiple countries represented in this year's tournament. Uh, obviously, we have some pioneers showing up. We have some new blood that's made a showing in the last few years. Well, let, me, let me just tell you the lineup. We, we've got seven ex champs in the lineup. We've got two ex hosts. That's, well, not a host. You haven't hosted this one, but you've been a host of one of the sister well, tournaments. And Ken's a host. A, can it be a brother tournament? If, if you want it to be, I'd prefer. Men, men only. Well, okay, well, we've got a sister, we've got a brother tournament. You know, <laughs> so, and we've got 10 or 11, I think, 11 visitors coming this year, flying in. And um, from all over the globe, we've got people coming in from the UK, from Alabama, from California. 
Absolutely. This is uh, definitely a traveler's traveler's tournament this year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some surprises coming out of uh, across the pond. We've also got four or five rookies in the tournament this year. And, and who are they, Keith? Well, um, I've got Mike Smith coming in from England. He had, he's actually been to um, a Super Bowl party before, but it was once. It was one of the ones that you were hosting, but. He couldn't. We couldn't make it to Texas. He came to the party in in California. He knows all about it, but okay. he, he he said he had to be here this year. Right. Oh, I'm very, we're very pleased to, yeah. to have Mike. Yeah. Us. We've got him. We've got Martin Channel. We've got Martin Bell. We've got Ian Ogilvy, and we've got Doug, a local boy, who um, could feature in the latter stages Doug of the could tournament. Doug will be one of the um, surprises in the in the in the tournament. Although he's a good player. We don't know how he will shape up under the pressure of the Bud Bowl. That's what, yeah. and that's what people huge really impact, don't, yeah. don't really understand. Um, I mean, with the viewers at home, they do know the pressure that um, playing in the tournament brings, and also um, the drinking. Now, can he really play? Can he drink for 10 hours and, and, and play? Now, let me ask you about the drinking. I mean, Jim Dunn kind of, uh, tried to enforce the Dunn rule years and years ago. It never really caught on. Um, the the Dunn rule was that you had to drink a drink during every game. Well, I think you should. I mean, we so you know, yes, I do because I yeah, think you support do, the Dunn the I, Dunn rule. I, I do because we those of us who who do remember the Les Mills shenanigans. Oh, in the Boddington Cup, Boddington, yes, yeah, yeah. Who Les drank water. That. And of course, Les went on to win, but he is part of the red shite, so we know what we know what he's like. Drinking should be permitted well, in we, the blood bowl. Well, Ryan could comment on um, another competitor that followed that similar line, was Marcel Elfers won a couple of tournaments by not drinking. Uh, yes, actually, Marcel Elfers is one of the most decorated participants in this tournament with well, uh, eight showings and finals across all of the preliminaries and blood bowl tournament with five wins. Um, second is you, sir. It's, uh, it's actually not now. It's Jim Dunn. Jim Dunn. Your last year, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got outdated material. Oh, no, 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 sorry. No. Oh, you're talking about all the tournaments. All the you're tournaments. Correct, you're correct. This yeah. is your year. I'm too. one ahead of Jim on all tournaments. And we would know that if you accomplish a showing in the finals and a victory this year, you will have done every single tournament with a copious amount of alcohol in your system, thus proving that we should enforce the Jim Dunn rule. I've been a proponent of that rule yes, for a long time. I am a proponent time. of the uh, league. Proponent, no, not yeah. a proprietor. There you go. Yeah. You own it. Right. <laughs> uh, John, what do you have to say on the, the coming up tournament? Well, I hope we all drink, but I know it's going to be a great turnout, and I, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm anxious to see how it kind of pans out, because I hope that Is that Pizza Pan? Pizza, yeah, it could be. Yeah, Lost Boys. <laughs> So, uh, but I am hoping that it kind of turns out to how the Super Bowl is shaping up to where it's a young guy and an old guy. I'd actually like to see Let that it, in the final. Well, now that you mention that, yeah, that, that old guy, young guy uh, came in when the tournament moved back here to Washington. That's right. In 2010, I think it started. Or 2009. 2009. 2009, yeah. Okay. And, and the no, young... 2008. Yes, it was. Thank you. I stand corrected. Part. As well done, Ryan. Well done. Yeah, but um, yeah, the, the, the young guys who originally had to watch us in the early days had grown up and become players themselves, and this natural, um, natural competition formed. Absolutely. Uh, we, we had some of the best teachers. Um, You'd also learn to drink. Yes. We did. Now, the beauty of the Bud Bulls for us young guys was not only were we able to watch some of the best in the game, but the best in the game were so distracted that we were able to sneak the beers and the liquor shots. Uh, that did help us in our game, obviously, to grow up seeing double and still being able to get a cross rail bank. Well, also, I think that um, it shows that the boys were very candid the way that they hid, the way that they drank. Unlike the girls who left the oh. bottles under their beds. That's right. And yeah. that's a very famous in in incident. That was a famous incident, yeah. Was, yes. There'll be a book written about this thing. Um, in years to come. In, in years to come, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Well, a lot of secrets will come out. Oh, well. Well, hopefully, um, you know, we have to keep it civil for the children, so some things will still be kept under wraps. Right. 
So let's talk a little bit about the format this year. We've got 25 players. I don't think we've had that many before. I think we've had 24 and it worked all right, but there's been a lot of interest this year and a lot of... Um, Does someone get a buy then? No, no one gets a buy. We, we've just... Uh, the, the format has been adjusted to allow everyone to play. There's going to be six groups. Okay. Four, uh, five groups of four players, one group of five. And the, the winner and the runner-up of each group will qualify for the knockout rounds. Almost a bit like the Champions League. Yeah. The, the, top, the top four uh, group winners will actually get a buy in the first round of the knockout rounds. And so once it gets to the knockout rounds, it's going to be like every other year. And, you know, we're going to go from 12 to, to a champion. And that goes fairly quickly. But the knockout rounds, the, the group rounds this year, are going to be long, mm. arduous, and it's going to take the toll on some of the, the top drinkers. It's going to save a lot of drinking. Very important, the knockout rounds this or Yes, the knockout rounds this year. Uh, the, the one problem we see over the years is the weight between your games. A lot of things can happen during that weight. There's excessive drinking, there's alleged marijuana smoking, there is possible pill popping. Gotta watch out for those. But alas, this is where the finest stand out. I feel it's fit that in this Bud Bowl 20, only the finest competitor will survive the day, as we expect this to be about an 11 hour ordeal. Well, we have to also remember that um, during, um, <clears throat> Keith has been on the phone and on email persuading people to come to the tournament, and Keith did ask me, can I get in touch with one of our past participants, Mr. Brian Landry? And Brian one of the reasons, he was one of the Texas participants, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons Brian elected to come was that I said to him, as a past winner, he has automatically entry into Sunday's final, and there is no drug test. So we expect to see Brian. We yeah. expect yeah. to see Brian. <laughs> now, talking of drugs, though, what's your take on Pat Cavedo? Well, I feel we should get a word from uh, Bud Bowl 15 champion, the bad boy Bud Bowl, John Turner himself, because his, his win was under a lot of scrutiny over uh, that year, wasn't it, John? I don't know if I'd say a lot, but it did have an impact. He helped me out. I was under some tough times, pretty tired, drawn out. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it gave me the win that day. I definitely worked So, So what are you saying? He actually helped you out with, with some drugs? No, no, no. Um, I had a bad headache. I mean, you know, we've had Tylenol kid experiences in, in the, the past. Kid, and, uh, yeah. We don't like to talk about the Tylenol kid well, experiences. You the doc situation, so I'm going to bring up Tylenol Kid. Could he be considered... For the record, all drugs that I've taken were for recreational purposes and not to fix any ailments. Mine were prescription. Could could Pat be considered Crosby Cavedo? Bill Cosby Cavedo. Watch your drinks, kids. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's been, it's been a few years since that happened, so I, I can't really say one way or the other. Pat made a show in at the tournament last year. I think he went out in the semi-finals, which is the furthest he ever went. But now, talking about the other entrant from Alabama, Stuart Kay. He's a top pool player in his own right, but he's never done anything in this yeah. tournament. There's, there's no follow through there. So no, I don't during the day. In between your games, you can interview people during the day. Abs. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. I need some GoPro. I need that microphone. I'll see if Tenda can hook it up. With so, this tell me about the this uh, drug situation then, because uh, we are off, we're off camera. We're, we're, are we off record now? Well, we all know. Fan. No, I, I don't. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah, we're, we're off air. No, we know. We know Pat as a as a. He's the doc. He is doc. If you have, his nickname is the doc. If you have any problems with anything, he's got. He's a had so many injuries that okay. he's, he's he you know okay. he's he he needs constant med medication. So. so Bud Bowl 15. No, stop. We, we're not fair. What? We're not fair. Sure no, we're back from commercial. Oh, yeah. and we're, we're back. back. We're back? <laughs> the live so, sign's not working. Yeah, sorry about that. We had to break for commercial because we have to pay the rent like everybody else. No, Chris, it's me speaking. It? <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was saying before the break, um, Stuart comes up. It's really for the occasion. So, he arrives sometimes on a Thursday. It's a long, you know, it's a long weekend. He actually commented last year that he was coming up to win it, but it didn't work out. Right. Well, as I said, he comes really for, yeah. for, for, for enjoyment. So that's perhaps why his form dips in, dips in the final. 
And it's freaking wrecked us as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, freaking wrecked Bobby. He's going to be here, but he's only going to be a spectator. His playing days are over. Well, because he's all work. Chris, on here. Chris, Chris. Um, because he's usually wrecked. He's freaking wrecked. Yeah. So, um, moving on. So, who else can we talk about? <laughs> we're going to have about six, six players that were in the original Bud Bowl. Wow. Yeah. Can, you, can you name them? I can. If you pass me that picture over there, technician. I'll hold that. <laughs> Oops. Oh. Thank you. I have my prop here. It's yes. Five. Yeah, we're going to have Carl Ellard. Again, not a player that's going to you know, cause any damage in this tournament. Um, Martin Gita was going to play, but he's, he's elected to not. Oh, you know, well, then that's a shame. We've got Mike Olney. Mike Olney, you know, he's, he's a threat. He's, he's a one-time winner, a four-time runner-up. Wow, Mike's yeah. very good. I mean, oh, well, is Mike, um, and Ryan could probably tell us, is he using his snooker cube? Uh, he is still using what I consider the sniper barrel of, of pool cues. Uh, it is able to reach distances that are unheard of in so normal So sim similar to Jim Dunn. Jim Dunn prefers the snooker cue to a pool cue. Correct. Now they have uh, the very small narrow tips. Right. Should these be banned? I don't think so. No. Uh, even though the numbers show that they can win tournaments. Is it they... similar to the putters that golfers use that they can pin against their chest and get a little bit, you know? I mean, as a sports broadcaster, I have to say I'm more interested in normal sports and not golf, so I can comment on that. I, in my opinion, um, if the guys want to use a snooker cube, fair enough. I mean, it's like, um, you know, someone having their own patter or... I, do you recall a, a memory at but the only open arena where you not only challenged but also came out victorious beating people with boat brushes? But it wasn't during the tournament. It had was it just an exhibition. An exhibition of your almighty talent. So really it's in it's in the operator. So, less the so as the host of the only opener, would I be allowed to use the boat brush during tournament play? Absolutely. I encourage all sorts of shenanigans at my tournament, uh, drug use especially. But I feel that if you have the confidence in your game to bring a boat brush or a crutch, perhaps, to shoot pool, and you can come out victorious, more power to you. Going back to the original Bud Bowl, the other four players that, that participated that will be here next week are Ken, Thank you. Yeah, I will Stuart be. Kay, myself, and Jim Dunn. Jim. And in fact, Jimmy, in fact, he's flying in. Yes, Jim. Even, even though Jim's he does flying live, in. even though he does live here, he's actually on a assignment um, out, out of state, and he's he will be flying in for the tournament. So we're, we're pleased that he can he can he can make it. Uh, as a young guy, I'm pleased to say that all of the people in that picture are still alive and kicking. Which That's is right. In itself, yeah. a surprise yeah. given Cheers to that. What's Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, ab no yeah. absent friends yet. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Mm. You alright then? <laughs> it's the and funnel of also, there could be some Skyping. We are hoping to have Mr. John Short. Oh, Mr. John Short might. He was at the original Bud Bowl. Hopefully yes. we'll get him cool. on a live feed Maybe. from yeah. England. That's and we're guess. also hoping yeah. to get Paul, Paul Creary on a live feed from Australia. That is tremendous. That he is. also played in the original. He was one of the first young guys, well, he was the first young guy to ever play in this wow. tournament. And it just shows you how the tournament has grown over, over the years that we do have this international um, in, it, allure. It is, it is truly global. It is. Now, there's going to be, there's going to be talk about who is going to take this tournament on after it moves from this uh, arena. Who's going to do Bud Bowl 21? Who, who do you think uh, might want to take that on, John? I honestly don't know, but I, the only person I can consider or think of locally um, would be Andrew. You know, and, and we've had some discussions with that, but I, I do don't you, know. How, what's your do you think he'll, do you think he'll stay so? local? I, I, I'm kind of thinking that the, the Alabama folk might I want to throw a, a claim in. I had given some, to, uh, some consideration to that as well, and it would it would make sense. Um, 
both have the stadiums and the uh, the, the arenas to, yeah. to accommodate this kind of tournament. Has, yeah. has anyone spoken to the Alabama folks? Not yet, no. We're, we're, I think discussions, I think there's meetings planned in the next week. I see. We'll say it has much better weather that time of year. It, well, you say that, but it's kind of hurricane Sometimes, season. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, has Alabama expressed a, an interest? Not, not publicly. <clears throat> I see. <clears throat> Okay. Because obviously it's not, it's, it's, it's a joint venture, it's not just, it's, it's a, uh, in terms of the host and hostess. Now, Ken, you're, you're voicing a lot of opinion here. Now, if you, I know you're based up here right now, but if you were to be based back in Texas, would you consider re-hosting the tournament? Good question. That's a good question. Um, it's a question that at the moment I can't really answer because I'm a bit of a gypsy. And I've been a gypsy for about I'm eight years, so... I really don't know. Okay. Good answer. Yeah. That was a very gypsy answer. Well, you know. Commissioner Bud there, I, what, would you have to sign off on it or would you be... I, I don't mind. To, uh, well, but, you know, there'll, there'll be some discussion and uh, obviously if there's, there's two people really, you know, it'd have to be what's best for everyone. Right. You know, you know, obviously there's travel, there's getting there, there's, you know... You have accommodations it, it, to think about yeah. for the travel. And... and as as an old timer, would I be happy in handing it over to a young guy? Because it would change the it would change the whole complexion of the tournament. Sure. There's a lot of questions going into this off season, but well, you know, I think um, with any competition, um, just because someone's young, it doesn't mean that they can't do it. I mean, and things things will change. Perhaps the young the young guys will have a, diff a different approach, and they will bring in new. Um, we'll, we'll take the tournament to new, new um, territory. Well, no disrespect, Ken, but you haven't been a part of the last eight years of bullshit that we've had to endure from them. Bullshit. Uh, Ken, I have we'll to believe can you beat that up. <laughs> I agree with Bud. Uh, a lot of shenanigans have come the way of this tournament. Uh, Argu arguments and scandal going into the semifinals. Well, you know, you hope and so. And qualifying tournaments and as well. And qualifying tournaments. Well, although, you know, um, Keith has voiced his opinion, in other, you have to look at it another way, though. He's blaming the young guys, but then would you look at the, the leadership? That's been our argument all along. What do you have to say regarding the leadership of this tournament? Well, the, 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 Would you say it's been loosey goosey? Well, not loosey goosey, but um, but um, well, I mean, as I mean, as loose, loose -y goosey. Oh. I mean, oh. that, that's a whole. Uh, I mean, topic yeah, that's there. a whole new topic. Topic with with. I have to say that Ken, you were involved in the first Bud Bowl where women were allowed to play. Okay. Yes, and, and like as I said at the beginning of this broadcast, they were the the was the, that was that the difficult years of the Bud Bowl where we were struggling to get um, players players, mm -hmm. and we had to allow a few women to well, play. And I think well, I think you have to also look at it that because of the international um, character of the Bud Bowl, people do move around, and sometimes there just aren't enough people. At one, at one, at one location due to global um, events. It wasn't the initial mission statement of this tournament to have women players. No disrespect, no disrespect to the women, but you know it was a, it was a boys' day out. You know, but I think in fact, let me just say say this: the the tournament was a sideshow to begin with. The the initial um, precept of this day was we would all get together to watch the Super Bowl. And there would be a pool tournament on the side. Over the years, the pool tournament grew in importance. Absolutely. And now it's a pool tournament with a Super Bowl on right. the side. I, I, I would have to say that the Bud Bowl is now bigger than the NFL. I, 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 I would agree with that. I, I would agree with that. But with that comes responsibilities. So if, as, you know, as if you are the head of the Bud Bowl, and if you, I mean, as the commissioner, um, the buck stops it. Stops with you. Well, it's just as well I'm resigning then, yeah, because well, it seems you're resigning, yeah, so Keith. You're just stepping down. I'm stepping down. Yes. Stepping yeah, down. I'll still be a, a, an advisor. Oh yes, yes, an valid advisor. But if you really have opinions on, you know, how the young people will take on the tournament, you just have to look at it as that you're a, you're a parent, 
And then now we should we should say you are now a godparent. I am. And I'm a grandparent as well. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. So really, um, the way your children, i.e. the young, i.e. the younger, the I, younger generation, take on a tournament, you can advise. I would I would love to think that the tournament would still be going along when Jack would be a, you know old enough to participate. Oh, that would be a very very good yeah. time. Yeah. Very cool. And so, let's and, 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 and on that note, that does mean then the tournament, if, if young people are going to be around them, then that's a, a, the, you know. There's even an outside chance the tournament could move to Australia. Well, that is, that is truly global. Yes, yeah, that would be. On that note, shall we uh, get back to... It's really difficult to pick between the two, though, because we have had some, some pretty significant surprises in the past, the last few years, actually. Young guys kind of stepping up trying to make their mark um, but you still have the usual suspects coming in for the for the old guy's side and we keep seeing the same five people kind of in the finals and and fighting it off so is another guy, young guy going to step in and it's, have a head to head it's hard, the old guy? It, it's hard to actually predict the two finalists because you don't know where the draw will take these players right Absolutely. but if you had to if you had to pick two players well i would probably say Actually, Keith, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if you made it there. Um, Jim played exceptionally well last year. I was, and we were all kind of taken back with that. He was <coughs> quite surprised by himself, also. Uh, Kaika, I mean, he's kind of come out of nowhere, and he's just a power shooter. But then you have Pat. Pat's also shot. Pat only. He's also shot very well. Uh, he's, he's been very unlucky. He's been, he been runner up a few times. Yeah. Um, so honestly, I. I guess between that, I, w I wouldn't be surprised to see Mike and Pat maybe go at it again. Possibly Ryan, if he could uh, stay away from the headache situation. And the drugs. And the drugs. And the alcohol. Let's not forget, the only reason I didn't s swing for the fences in 2013 was because of our Seahawks Super Bowl and the excessive amount of touchdowns. Ryan, the, it, is the pressure, is the pressure of being the only only never to make the final of the Bud Bowl? Does that get on you? Absolutely. I'll tell you. I just, uh, going over our notes here, I noticed that I'm the only only. <laughs> Say that quick. <laughs> I am the only only to have never hit the final of the Bud Bowl. Wow, well, uh, he's doing that with alcohol. It is, yeah. it is uh, I find it to be disgraceful to my family, and uh, this just renews my current invigoration to hit the finals as if... I was Ike Turner. Do you feel like the Peyton or the Eli of the Only Family? Mm, that's a good question. I feel like the Archie. Oh, not well, an age, never but made it. more never of made a it. wisdom, yeah, likable. Uh, he has the charisma, the go get him attitude, and I feel like I'm going to bring that this year when I bring this game to the finals. And uh, I'm calling it right now. I'm taking out Ikeka Kelly. You so that's your, that's your prediction. So go back to John. So, wait, so two young guys then? Yes, prediction. because the old guys are. Pretty much what they imply as being old guys, P useless, uh, past their prime, uh, so more talk than, you know, useful bowels. Right. So, John, your final pick? It's got to come back to me, huh? Well, I, actually, pick, I, would, I, would like to see, I would like to see Mike and Ryan go at it, honestly. You know, because really? he, he hasn't had the experience that, that Pat has against his dad. So, right. to see those two... Or hell, even Pat and Ryan. But, I mean, do, do we want another people? Manning, I mean, an only final? Well, if the, the onlys are a dynasty. Mix it up. He hasn't been there they yet. Are. They are. They are. And you can't, you know, you can't, um, yes. you can't, you can't go so, past it. So, can your pick? My pick, I'm going to go with, my first pick is, if he has enough guineas, Jim Dunn. Um, back to I, back. I, I think you know Jim Dunn with them Guinness. They win a fifth Bud Bowl. That would be unbelievable. And back you to know, back. You know, no thought, one, no one has ever won this tournament back to back. Well, I think Jim Dunn with Guinness is an awesome sight, and I'm going to have to really go with one of the Ornies. Oh, They're just because they are the Ornies, so, honestly. Yeah. So they, all they, three of you. All three of you all expect an Olney to be in the final. Well, yeah. there are three of them against all of us. And so I, I, I must thing. admit, I have to agree. My, my choice for the final this year, should it pan out that way, would be Ryan against one of the rookies this year, Martin Channel. You've got to watch Martin Channel. He's a hell of a pool player. He doesn't get drunk, but he drinks a lot. Mm. Mm. 
I that's mean, an impressive feat to bring into the Bud Bowl competition. Yeah, yeah, you've got to watch this guy. I think he could go all the way. And, and, and if it was that final, I would have to have to pick uh, Martin to win it. Well, I'd have to yell at you for that. <laughs> but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sad about either of you winning it. But Martin is, is my pick to win it. He, he, I'm going on I'm going on record here to say Martin Channel will win the Bud Bowl. Is Martin he, Channel, I'm coming for you. Is he local? I'm he's from San Diego, sorry. Oh, he's from San Diego. Is he flying in then? Yes, he is. I see. Do you think he'll be affected by the change in weather and altitude? I made a similar prediction a couple of years ago when Dave Rothwell flew in from Britain and I picked him to go all the way and he did. Really? So, yes. Did he win it? Yes, he did. What, who, who did he beat? Uh, Mr. Dave Rothwell oh. beat Pat. Patrick Olney. Wow. And only, another only final. Wow, wow. The numbers speak for themselves. Mm. I haven't won. No, so, can we just have a recap then? So, um... It's been five years since I was in it, so... No, sorry. And you, your your you, form kind of gone down since you won it. Did, was it, did you... The you, off-seasons, I haven't been able to uh, shoot very much, practice, you know... Did you lose time. your passion after you won it? No, and I know you're probably going to blame it on the drugs again, but no, that's not... Oh, okay. I, was, I wasn't, I was going to blame it on Lindsay. No, because the first year that we were together is the year I won, so that can't. That's, oh, that's the first year, though. Yeah. Right, we all that's know right. things. Yeah. We all, well, yeah. we all know the five-year fizzle, yeah. yeah. fizzle. The five-year uh, fizzle. Five-year fizzle. Not over the hump yet, I guess. Right, Chairman, can we have a recap then on the who all petitions are? John, um, I'm going to say Mike and Ryan, just for the sake of argument. Myself is Jim Dunn, and and only. Again, myself versus Ikaika Kelly. I'm coming for you, Volcano Cork. And I'm going for I'm going for Ryan and Martin Channel. Well, Thank you. I think we should go. So so Ryan Ryan is a, a pretty uh, hot favourite to get to the final. Uh, well, well, we know what happens when he's put under a lot of pressure. Maybe Doc will have a say in that. Yeah. I sit here as a colleague, but I know uh, a lot of uh, confidence is put into my pool game. Uh, I I let everyone down over the years. That's my realization in this last off season. Uh, I had a great chance to clean the table with you in, in 2014. Uh, unfortunately, my Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl champions of Super Bowl 48 were doing so well that I couldn't maintain the alcohol to pool ratio and my caring of the tournament plummeted. However, now we've had a win, we've had a loss, we're not in it this year. I'm ready to take it. All right. All right. That's fine. It's all. It's fine. It's all. Okay. So we'll go off to uh, to a commercial break now. When we come back, we'll be over in the other side of the studio, ready for the draw. Thank you. Are we off here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Are we off here? All right. Catch your breath. Get more <laughs> drinks. You're doing great. Yeah. All right. Your job. Your job's done scurrying. now. You won't need that now. Oh, you're scurrying. That was fantastic. <laughs> that was funny. I hope. That's long. People. Yeah, yeah I knew it was going to be wow. 10 minutes. There's just no <laughs> way. It's no, too much to talk about. This is a fucking broadcast. Yeah. I'm all about uh, it. Just, Little do we know, his camera right. ran out of memory and battery power like 20 minutes I know, ago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, cigarette. <laughs> Pull it right. Yeah, Smoke it. Okay. All right. So, we're about to commence the draw for Bud Bowl 20. The way this will work is I have the names and numbers sorted. Not particularly in the favourites of seeds, but seeded in their potential. So what we'll do now is draw out the top seed for each group. Each of these uh, panellists will pull out two numbers each. Not, not together, but we'll go Ryan, then John, then Ken, then Ryan, John again. And we'll do that for each round. So this is for the top seed in each group. For the top seed in Group A, we have number two. Which is Ryan. Wow. Can we have a recount? <laughs> Please, a recount. <laughs> Gotta get it from New York. For Group 2, top seed is number six. Number six. It's Martin Channel. Oh. Oh. Well, he's not in the same group. Right. We couldn't be. It's, they're all top seeds. Oh, he's the top, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So you won't be in this cup? No, no, no. I'm going to be in <laughs> four or something. The next one is number four. Number four is Mike Olney. Oh. 
pass winner. Ryan. Number one. Jim Dunn wow. will be top of group four. Wow, that's a tough group. Five. Is John himself. Well, again. Bad boy John. Can we have a recount? I know, they're pulling out the Yeah. Them. Number three. Icus. Okay, that's the top seeds done. We now go to the second seeds in each group. Same order. I have to say this is pretty unorthodox seeding and pulling names. Uh, it's almost as if you don't have confidence in people in this second cup. Like uh, number six here. Number six is Chubbs. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why you did it. Number three. Bud. You, yourself. Wow. Well, same group as who? Martin Shannon, the, my favorite. Well, number one. Pat Olney. Oh. He's in with Mike oh, Olney. Oh, wow. Oh, Dodge that bullet. Wow. The group, we, the group of death is forming. The group of death is forming. Group three is the group of death so far. Number two. Tor. Jim, Jim and Tor. Tor. Yeah, they go back. They good. go back as well. Eh? Yeah. 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 We've got a couple of Five. nominations for group Andrew group. will be in with John. Did wow. you pick that it's especially? Be, it's gonna be a young guy group. Young guy group. Mm -hmm. Get the roof raft out of there. <laughs> Number four. Brian Landry. Oh. Drop three. That that could be an interesting group yeah. so far. Let's let's before we get to the group, yeah, let's Ooh. let's comment on the top seeds in each group. In group one, you got Ryan and Chubbs. Uh, historically as Ryan, uh, I can say that the numbers are in my favor so but, far. But Chubbs is very competitive. Oh, that he is, and, and he has won the um, only the, the only, only open, open yeah. and busting Bob's ball. That's right. So he's a two-time champion. He's a two-time champion of of a one-time tournament. I almost considered that like winning a coloring contest from the grocery store. Wow. Um, some, something you can red brag red about, red. but it's really meaningless in my opinion. However, uh, I will not put Chops down. Uh, you gave him certain advice a couple of years ago about maintaining his drinking. Which has turned him into the player we see in these last couple of years. Well, Claire helped with that the year that she fed him tequila all afternoon when he thought... Oh, he the was, water shots. The water shots. Yeah, wow. yeah that's the, the Watergate. Yeah, Watergate. 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 <laughs> Watergate. Yeah. 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 yeah, Watergate 2. It'll happen every Electric time. Electric Boogaloo. Okay, any other, any other groups stand out right now? I Jim will say Tor. Jim and Tor, is that's, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Or interesting group so far, anyway. Okay, certainly the group to avoid. Yes. So now we get to, down to the uh, group three, which are, which are players that have potential but have often failed to um, meet the, expectations. The there you go, yeah. yeah. Let's go. So Absolutely. the third player in each group. For group one, we have number one. Pat Cavedo. Mm -hmm. The Doc. Mm. Cosby Cavedo. Number five. Making things interesting, group Dennis. One. Ooh, I owe Dennis. He knocked me out a few years ago. Number two. Stuart. What Ooh. a group this is Ooh. turning out to be. This is definitely... I think Stuart going into group three makes it an automatic group of death. Oh. Maybe I should stop talking and pull a number like number four. Ian Bennett. Now there's a, there's a name that we haven't spoken about yet. Oh, yeah. Ian is another rookie in this tournament, but again, he has potential. It'll be interesting to see how he's and able this, to look out for against four. champions like Tor and Jim. Oh, he's going to have to play Billy's best game in that group. Yeah, that's a tough group. Six. Hogan. So this is, this is looking like a cakewalk for you, John. Don't mind that. Number three, Doug. This Ooh. could be interesting. He's in with a former champ, and two former champions. Tough. Will the rookie. pressure get to him? Will the yeah. pressure get to him? Uh, he's a rookie. Okay. Yeah, 
There right. have been surprises before. Oh, that one bounced out. Ryan's pounced on it. it. Now, what are we classifying this current these group are the, of drawings? I'm, well, I'm kind of, you know, you know, I might be bad here, but these are the also runs. Hmm. I don't agree there with may that be statement. An ups, there may be an upset along the way, but they're not going to go to the final. Fair enough. Uh, can we wager a financial amount on that? $10 says that someone in group four goes to the finals. Really? I'll take wow. that bet. $1, Bob. But <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. Bud and Ryan. We're all up in it. Number seven. Ken. Ho ho. Oh. Wow. Okay, well, I guess that one isn't going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll weigh you down. Again, number five. Number five. Martin Bell. Number six. Number six is Carl. Well, there's, there's the banana in that group. <laughs> in a bucket of apples. Number four. Number four, Mike Smith. Quite the generic name. Number two, Ian Ogilvy. Not so much. You have got the easiest group of the lot. Getting another ring, man. It's the year. Didn't mention it earlier, didn't want to. Is it a ring in the shoes? A ring? What? Look at I think I made face. of money? <laughs> <He's just laughs> number three. Number three, Mike Harrison. And the final one, making up... There you go, Kamish. Making up the group six is number one, Paul Subovic. Uh Paul Subovic's someone we haven't talked about today. That's true. Very true. He, he did go on uh, record a week or so ago saying that he's not just coming to participate, he's coming to win it. Wow. Ooh, I, I like the confidence from the young buck. He's uh, in with two former champions and one of the favorite uh, yeah, rookies. Yeah. So it's a tough group that Paul's in. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've seen Paul shoot some really spectacular pool. He has. However, uh, the continuity just isn't there. I'm hoping that uh, we catch him on a, on a high note this week. Uh, maybe we get to see some upsets, see some spectacular if, shooting. If, if, if tonight's anything to go by, he's not drinking. That'll just have to change then, won't it? Discussion for another time, perhaps. Well, he is driving. Well, he, he's part of the camera group, so, you know. Yeah, he's, he's working. He's working. Work. Yeah, he's yes. working. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that concludes the draw. And uh, if, nice. if, if you want to take note of that for everyone's uh, viewing pleasure. There you go. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, We've got some interesting groups there. Should be a fun day. As you, always. Ryan Ryan playing the Doc. Now, will that bring up any... Uh, would, do you think Doc could mess with him? Watch your drink, Ryan. Uh, I do plan on drinking out of a sippy cup for the first couple hours of the day to prevent a Cosby situation on the hands of uh, Pat Cavato. Uh, however, Pat and I go way back. Uh, I don't see any foul play unless he finds out what I did to him a couple years ago. So, so Wait. just looking at this, just looking at this draw on the the opening games. God, I have to be here right at you're the beginning. You're gonna have to. You're right. You're the oh, you're the opening game of the tournament. That's bullshit. <laughs> so you need to. You and Chubbs need to be here at ten o'clock. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, let's break that down for me if you could. Just, just estimation. So I guess, A wise. player A plays player B. That's the first game in every group. So Ryan and Chubbs is going to open the tournament, followed by Martin Channel and myself, which won't be a problem because we're both at. At the arena, then Mike Olney and Pat Olney. Also, so all the Olneys are going to need to be here at ten o'clock. Jim and Tor. This might be a long day for Tor. It could take in a you know it's toll on Tor. But Jim, Jim, he knows what it's all about. He's Jim's he's experienced an enough. Runner. Yeah, he's also uh, traveling though. Jim yes, understands he's a, he's the tournament. He's a defending champion, so Not I think if he gets a result against Tor, he's going to cruise through that group. When is Jim arriving town? Do we know? Thursday night. Thursday night, yes. yes. Okay. Plenty of time to get drunk and hungover. It's John great. and Andrew will be the, the first game in that group, which is the, the toughest game in that group, by the way. So everyone, you know, 
and then you got Ikes and Brian Landry. That that'll be about. I, I'm guessing that'll be about 11:15. Yeah. So. So there you have it, folks. We have about the first hour and 15 minutes of the Bud Bowl 20 lined up for you. So is there games on Saturday? The pre qualifier No, no. It's all taking part Sunday. Kick okay. off at uh, 10 o'clock. Pacific Standard. Ken, your first game. Your first, where are you? Your first game is going to be the seventh game of the tournament. Oh, seven lucky. It's going to be 11.30, uh, 11.45. Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd aim to be here just after 11 so you can get warmed up, get a couple of drinks down here. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe a breakfast sandwich, you know. Oh, well, definitely we'll have a breakfast, there's no doubt yeah. about that. Will you go to the 12th, uh, the 112th Street uh, diner? Well, n well no, because I'm hoping to get a cab here so I'll have breakfast at home. Wait for, wait for my cat, which I need to order, and um, no, I'll be... Having breakfast at home, does that mean you have to get up earlier? I'm, I'm a very school breakfast cooker. It, okay. It won't, it, it won't, it you won't, won't prepare something the night before? No, no, I like it fresh. Right. Breakfast is, of course, very important to the Bud Bowl tournament. It is. You oh, yeah, it sets you up for the day. Yeah. We've got to have a base. We won't forget the year where fiber bars were handed out to mm. most of the older gentlemen in this household prior to, I believe, Bud Bowl 18. Uh, almost had to shut this place down, but I think we can get past it with some eggs, so some they, bacon, coffee. We didn't talk about that. standard well, standard know, breakfast. Well, what we haven't talked about though is some um, kitchen stuff. Oh, what round of applause for the yeah. kitchen staff? Yeah. Great job. Love it. Yeah, that's it. That like yeah, we've, we've, we've had, yeah, we've got there's a there's a hall of fame for kitchen stuff. That's why it's an honorable mention and not conversation. This is the trophy everyone's playing for. Has it all, all the names on there now? All the names are on there. You know, we, as, as you see, there's enough room for it to be continued. We just have to have uh, a volunteer to uh, to uh, sponsor it. I especially like this one. I don't see the asterisks. <laughs> Not only did you win Trumps. it that year, but you stopped tour going back to back. I, exactly. Yeah. First young guy and, and a possible back to back win. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun day. I think it was only twice that's happened. That's, well, yeah, it's only twice that's happened. Look, poor old Mike Olney, runner up three times in the first five years. Uh, I feel like uh, he brought a little shame to our family. I'm hoping to bring it back around with the finalizing win. It wasn't until the 10th Bud Bowl that Mike actually broke through and won it, and, but he, he hasn't figured since, so maybe Mike's days are over, you know? Maybe it's time for Pat Olney to take him out. He, he does owe him because it was Pat that he beat in the final that year. Uh, the birthday controversy, the birthday. if yep. anyone remembers that. Uh, no, can you remind us? Uh, Mike Olney hesitated. Uh, now, Patrick Olney and Mike Olney made it to the Bud Bowl, I believe, 12? Uh, yes. Bud Bowl 12 final. Uh, it just so happened to occur on February 3rd, Mike Olney's birthday landing on the 4th. Uh, this was another late tournament that rolled into midnight and at tied 1-1 one one in the Bud Bowl finals, my father opted to wait until 12 o'clock where my brother could not, in his right mind, beat my father on his birthday wow, cool for his tournament. <laughs> Controversy. Yeah. Um, wow. I, I, I don't agree with his tactics, however, tactics they are. Yeah. Well, you know, it is. Having said that, though, what? And in this loosey goosey league without rules or regulations, but, uh, but a lot he of did lose can it. But Patrick did lose to Mike in an only open final. What, what was his excuse that day? Uh, I believe it was sand in his nether parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. but all right. All right. Nobody likes All right. That. Thank you. So Thank you. that brings us to the end of our broadcast. We look forward to everyone arriving and safe journeys. Yep. Next Sunday begins for real. Thank you, Keith. For so it's from yeah. from Ken, from Goodbye. John, from Goodbye. Ryan, and myself. Cheers. See you next Cheers. week. Thank you. Bye. Bye. We open. We open. I need a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Where are my pants? Yeah. We should have done that every year. Yeah. That was really good, guys. All right, Chubb's gonna have. That's gonna be a mind fuck for him, I think, playing you. Because oh, in the first game, yeah. yeah. Out of that group, 
Well, I put the Spurs to him well, yesterday. Well, Ken so. had her in that group too, and I don't think he's Charles has ever played Ken. No. And I'm not so sure he's ever played Pat either. And Pat starting off that early in the morning, he actually shoots 